Hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking about five reasons why I think you should make Sri Lanka your next Asian destination. Part of my goal with these videos and my blogs is to share a few experiences or places that I really enjoyed visiting so that you <laughs> can do the same. A lot of people that I met while traveling in Sri Lanka were there because they needed to leave India because of the visa they had and so they needed to spend some time away from India to then go back. But I feel like there's a lot better reasons to travel there than just making sure that you can go back to India. I'm going to be listing five things that I think will convince you to go there too. First thing that I love about Sri Lanka, which I think is pretty convincing, is that it's perfect for budget travelers. Asia in general is kind of known for being a good choice for budget type backpackers because of how affordable it is for people. And a lot of people rave about how cheap everything in Southeast Asia or Thailand, but I'm here to tell you that if you really want to stretch your money, I mean really, then Sri Lanka might actually be a better choice. Of course, like any place, you can spend as little or as much as you want to, but I think it's pretty easy to get by with very little there. Public transport is super cheap. As long as you take the public buses, there are some that are kind of private or you can get private transportation with tourist agencies too, but if you go for just public transit, you're going to be traveling across the country for like tops $2 or something, you know, it's not, it's going to cost you very little to do the travel between cities or towns. I think one time I traveled from a, a beach along the south and I went all the way to the central part of the country and I think I spent like a dollar fifty Canadian. <laughs> pretty cheap. Accommodation is also pretty reasonable. Mind you, I was staying in mostly hostels, so a dorm is obviously going to be cheaper than if you go for an expensive hotel room, but if I was spending close to $10 on a night stay, that was like luxurious <laughs> again. $10 might not get you that fancy hotel room or anything, but if a clean bed in a dorm is what you want and what a lot of backpackers are looking for, then Sri Lanka is a great option. It's cheap. <laughs> Second reason why I think Sri Lanka is an awesome destination to go to is for beautiful beaches. They are lovely. I can't stress that enough. Like if you're looking for that beautiful white sand and the crystal water trees that you know what I'm talking about. They're just awesome. So if you're looking for a beach vacation in somewhere that's maybe a little bit more different than like a lot of people from Canada go to the Caribbean, I think Sri Lanka is an awesome destination to go to for that. And even if lying on a beach is not what you generally like doing, there are other things to do along the coast. You can surf. Surfing is actually one of the reasons a lot of people go there. There's good wildlife. I was seeing sea turtles like almost every morning while I was staying on the coast in the south. You can also go whale watching and I think there are really good diving spots. I don't dive and I don't know where exactly the best ones are, but maybe I'll look into that later for you. <laughs> My next reason is that if you are a vegetarian or a vegan, Sri Lanka might be a really great place to travel to for you. I'm not a strict vegetarian and I'm not a vegan by any means, but I do try to eat like that as much as I can. But regardless of that, Sri Lanka is a great place to travel to if you are either vegetarian or Fish is something that is used a lot in their cuisine. It's readily available. They're surrounded by water and it is good. So if you do eat fish, I suggest you have some, but you can always opt for an option that doesn't include meat or fish. My preference, we're talking rice and curry, which is pretty much a standard meal there. I would always prefer to get one that was with jackfruit and then other vegetables because I just liked it. But and actually, in my opinion, that jackfruit kind of tastes like tuna anyways. That aside, Sri Lanka is obviously a tropical place. Coconut is readily available. It's incorporated into food in different ways. But the important part is that a curry or stew type of thing, it's all with coconut milk. Vegan people, this is for you. Creamy, beautiful, dairy-free dishes. It's a dream. A lot of the foods that are there will be safe for you to eat because they're using coconut oil and they're using coconut milk because it's just what they have 
available to them. Now if you do eat meat, there are still lots of options, mainly chicken or fish, and also they cook with eggs a lot too. So if you want those things, you can still incorporate them into a lot of your meals. And please don't forget to indulge in all the fresh tropical food there. This is one of my favorite things about traveling to places like that. You just have to. <laughs> you gotta do it. Gotta eat fruit every day. The other thing I want to mention about food is the king coconuts, which are orange or orange yellow, that kind of color. <laughs> they are the best coconuts I've ever drank, hands down, ever. They're so awesome. I would suggest to drink at least one a day. It won't kill you. It might actually be healthy for you. I don't know. Next thing that I love about Sri Lanka is that it's relatively small. You might be thinking, small, that's a bad thing, right? I don't want to get island fever or something like that. But don't worry, you're not. It's still big. It's not like you can walk around the whole island. Well, that could make for an interesting adventure, but I mean, it's a small enough place that when you consider it as a whole country, that you can travel around quickly. Why is this good? It means that you'll have an easier time seeing different parts of the country without spending days in transit. So if you compare India, which a lot of people were coming from there to Sri Lanka, that I noticed, in India, to get across the country, you're spending like days on a train overnight. Whereas in Sri Lanka, you would really only need about a day to get from one end to the other. For example, I didn't actually take this train ride, but if you go from the south, Risa, and then all the way to the north, most northern part, like Jaffna, it'll take you about 15 hours in transit, which if you compare that to traveling across other countries, is pretty good. That means you're spending less time in transit and more time enjoying yourself and all the beautiful scenery that the country has to offer. Just because the country and the island is small, that doesn't mean there aren't so many different things to do and see there. Which brings me to the last point. Sri Lanka offers such a diverse landscape and experiences for all different types of travelers. This is probably the first thing I'll tell people when I'm trying to rant about how much I love Sri Lanka and kind of has to do with it being small. But the important part is that for a relatively small mass of land, the diversity of the landscape, the culture, and the experiences to be had is so vast. And this is my favorite thing. So I believe there is something for everyone on this island, and I'll just name a few that hopefully might uh, spark your interest. I already talked about the beaches. I talked about surfing and scuba diving if you don't feel like cooking yourself on the beach. There's also actually white water rafting in the south central part, Titugala. I might put that in the comments for you if, in case you're interested. So there's lots of different water sport activities and beaches to choose from. If you're a sucker for wildlife, like me, <laughs> you'll be very happy to know that there are several handfuls of options of national parks to go to where you can spot many different types of animals. Elephants, which you can spot on sometimes roads too. <laughs> Leopards, those are hard to spot, but are still there. Hornbills, monkeys, snakes. I want to say crocodile, but I, I'm not sure if what I saw was a crocodile or a different type of animal. Crocodile type thing. <laughs> Sri Lanka is actually a hot spot of biodiversity on our planet, so it's a nature lover's dream, basically. If you're going there for that purpose, make sure to bring your binoculars like I did. Next thing I want to mention is the landscape generally in the southern central part of the country. I'm talking rolling hills of green tea and forest, maybe some bigger mountains in the distance. I think it's dreamy. Actually, one of my favorite things, our most fond memories of traveling there was just being on those long bus rides and watching the hills roll past me. I don't know why I loved it so much. It was kind of soothing, but if long car ride kind of makes you car sick just thinking about it. The good thing I have to tell you is that there's actually some trains you can take. One of the famous ones is the train from Kandy to Ella, which is nothing short of beautiful. It should amaze you. This is what some of Sri Lanka has to offer you, those rolling green forested hills, and I think it's stunning and much different from the landscape that you'll see in some of the national parks, which are more like plains or the coast, which obviously you're thinking palm trees, tropical location. If this sounds appealing to you, good, because I think it should. Green hills and forest is good for you. Green is good for you. If that wasn't appealing for you, then what might be is the distinct cultural and historic sites on the island. Just a bit of background, Sri Lanka is mostly Buddhist. The next most common would be Hindu. 
mostly in the north, like Jaffna. But what that means is in the north and those pockets of Hindu influence, you'll be immersed in a totally different culture that'll feel different from the rest of the country. Remember that 15 hour train ride I mentioned? Yeah. Well, in one day, you might feel as if you've crossed the ocean over to India, which is kind of cool. Back to what I was talking about before is that because the country is mostly Buddhist, there is no shortage of interesting temples and historical sites that will fill the need of those people who are more into that type of touring, which is really cool. One of the most famous sites would be Amaradapura, which is an ancient city. It's amazing. Probably going to mention it in my next post about Sri Lanka. If you are interested in exploring these places, I would honestly be shocked if you went there and weren't impressed. If you did go there and you didn't like it, send me a message. That's it. With those brief points, I hope that you might be thinking more into making Sri Lanka your next adventure because I really believe it's a wonderful place to explore. It's very interesting and unique to a lot of other places. I myself would go back there to explore it more and see some of the places that I missed. So that's it. Stay posted if you want to watch my next video about Sri Lanka where I'll leave some of my top picks of the country. If you have anything you want to share or add about your experiences there, please leave a comment. I would love to talk to you about it. I hope you have an awesome week. Bye.